Fight fans around the world have been buzzing about UFC 300 for months, and for good reason. Set to take place live on Saturday, April 13th at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, UFC 300 is a monumental milestone for the UFC, and just looking at the fight card, it is shaping up to be a pretty promising night of fights. So let's break down each fight and also see who I predict coming out on top. Let's kick things off with the first fight on the main card between Bo Nickel and Cody Brundage. This fight is particularly intriguing because it pits two fighters with contrasting career trajectories against each other. Now, Bo Nickel has been on an absolute tear since stepping into the UFC. He's young, competitive, and has elite level wrestling. Not only that, Nickel has also shown that he has dynamite hands with impressive first round knockouts. In fact, Nickel has yet to see the second round in his MMA career, with his longest fight lasting just under three minutes. So he is a clear favorite heading into the fight. On the flip side, his opponent, Cody Brundage, has had a bit of a rocky start in the octagon. Despite showing some flashes of promise, he has faced major setbacks along the way. When it comes to prediction, the choice is clear. Bo Nickel has been nothing short of impressive since joining the UFC. His grappling skills are top-notch, his striking is on point, and he has shown a killer instinct inside the octagon. On the other hand, Cody Brundage has struggled to find his footing in recent fights and his overall performance has been underwhelming. I expect Nickel to come out strong, impose his will on Brundage, and ultimately secure a stoppage victory. This is probably the easiest pick of the entire fight card and probably the safest bet of the night. Moving on, we have the matchup between the lightweight contenders Charles Oliveira and Armand Sarukian. Now, this is a big fight for the lightweight division, with Dana White recently announcing that this fight will be a title eliminator, with the winner facing the champion Islam Mahachev next. Oliveira, a former champion, is undoubtedly one of the biggest names in the UFC. Known for his exceptional grappling skills, Oliveira has secured an impressive 21 wins by submission throughout his career. He holds the UFC record for the most finishes and most submissions in UFC history. Sarukian, on the other hand, boasts a formidable ground game of his own, with nine knockouts to his name in the UFC. His exceptional stamina makes him a formidable opponent for anyone in the division, including Oliveira. Fans who enjoy ground fighting and wrestling are in for a treat, as this matchup is likely to offer some intense grappling exchanges. This is one of the toughest fights to call. Oliveira has always been able to prove the doubters wrong and has had one of the greatest career comebacks of all time. But on the other hand, Armand is a beast in his own right. Both fighters' recent losses were only to champions. This fight is going to be a banger. Both fighters are proven finishers, so don't expect the fight to go to the distance. Expect fireworks from start to finish, with neither fighter willing to back down. When it comes to who I predict to come out on top, I have a feeling Oliveira will get it done. If there's anything that we can learn from Poirier's victory over Benoit Saint Denis, it's that you can never count these old guards out. Moving on, let's discuss the highly anticipated showdown between Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway. This matchup has garnered a lot of attention, with many even dubbing it the people's main event. And they're not wrong. This fight has all of the makings of an absolute barn burner that fans won't want to miss. Gaethje, known for his explosive fighting style, has earned a reputation as one of the most entertaining fighters in the UFC. They're going to stop the fight. Oh. That's it! Oh. Justin Gaethje! Coming off of a head kick knockout of Dustin Poirier, Gaethje brings an unpredictable and aggressive approach to every fight. Holloway, on the other hand, is no stranger to the spotlight, with an impressive record in the UFC, including a successful reign as the featherweight champion, he is known for his ability to go the distance and his slick boxing skills. His endurance and technical prowess pose a significant threat to Gaethje, especially considering Gaethje's tendency to finish fights early. So again, it's another tough fight to call. Now, While the odds makers seem to favor Gaethje, Holloway presents a unique challenge with his unmatched stamina and durability. Holloway's ability to weather Gaethje's storm and take the fight into the later rounds could very well prove to be a game changer. Considering Holloway's recent performances, including victories over Arnold Allen and the Korean Zombie, oh, 
it is clear that he is still in top form and ready to make a statement, which is why I am siding with Max Holloway on this one. Holloway's stamina and ability to absorb punishment could make him a tough puzzle for Gaethje to solve. Moving on to the co-main event of the night, we have the highly anticipated strawweight title bout between the champion Zhang Weili and the challenger Yan Zhaonan. This is a historic bout for the UFC as it marks the first time that two Chinese-born fighters will clash for a title. In terms of physical attributes, Wei Li and Zhao Nan match up perfectly well against each other. They stand just an inch apart in height and share the same reach. However, it is the fighting style that could make all the difference. Wei Li possesses a significant advantage in grappling, showcasing her strength and proficiency on the ground. Additionally, Wei Li's striking power cannot be overlooked as she has demonstrated her ability to dominate opponents with her stand-up game. Yan Zhaonan, on the other hand, has earned her shot at the title through her impressive first-round finish over Jessica Andrade. The speed oh! While the matchup appears to be closely contested on paper, Wei Li's brute strength and technical prowess give her a slight edge over her opponent. The odds makers have Wei Li as the favorite in this bout, and I will have to agree with them on this one. While Yan Zhaonan is a worthy contender, Wei Li's experience, grappling prowess, and striking make her a nightmare for anyone in the division. I expect Wei Li to showcase her skills and emerge victorious in what promises to be an exhilarating co-main event. Now, before we jump into the main event, let's take a closer look at some of the other noteworthy matchups on the undercard of UFC 300. This event is stacked from top to bottom, with each fight having the potential to headline its own fight night card. First up, we have a thrilling clash between two former champions, Cody No Love Garbrandt versus Davison Figueroa. Now, this is a significant step up in competition for Garbrandt, who is coming off wins against some lower ranked opponents. While he showed some improvements in his recent fights, Garbrandt's questionable chin remains a concern. Facing Figueroa, known for his devastating power and crisp striking, Garbrandt might struggle to keep up. I predict that Figueroa will secure a TKO victory here, capitalizing on his superior striking and power. Next up, we have Bobby Green taking on the seasoned veteran Jim Miller. Now, at 40 years old, Miller has defied the odds and showcased remarkable skill in recent bouts. However, facing Green, known for his defensive prowess and speed, Miller might find himself outmatched. While I would love to see Miller pull off an upset, I do believe that Green's slick movement and defensive skills will lead him to a unanimous decision victory. Moving on to Jessica Andrade versus Mariana Rodriguez, this promises to be a thrilling matchup between two skilled strikers. Both fighters possess knockout power and technical skill, making this a potential fight of the night candidate. While it is too close of a fight to call, I believe Andrade's experience and aggression will give her the edge, leading to a hard-fought decision victory. In another highly anticipated bout, we have Holly Holm facing off against the debuting Kayla Harrison. Despite Holmes' experience, Harrison's combination of power and grappling prowess make her a dangerous opponent. Holmes' predictable fighting style might play into Harrison's hands, leading to a submission victory for the newcomer. The X factor here is the weight cut. Harrison is massive for the 135 division, and we have yet to see how such a massive weight cut would affect her performance on fight night. Then we have Calvin Qatar taking on Aljamain Sterling in a clash of styles. Qatar's crisp boxing meets Sterling's grappling and wrestling expertise. While Qatar's striking is impressive, Sterling's ground game could prove to be the difference maker. I predict that Sterling will secure a clean unanimous decision victory, utilizing his grappling to control the fight. And then we have Yuri Prohoshka facing Alexander Rakich in a matchup of light heavyweight contenders. Prohoshka's unorthodox style and movement pose a challenge for Rakich, who is returning from a lengthy layoff. While Rakich may come out strong, I predict that Prohoshka is striking and movement to eventually overwhelm him, leading to an early TKO victory for Prohoshka. And finally, we have the main event of UFC 300, the light heavyweight title fight between Alex Pahea and Jamal Hill. This matchup promises to be an explosive showdown between two lethal knockout artists. On one hand, we have the champion, Pahea, a powerhouse known for his devastating leg kicks and powerful punches. Pahea's striking ability is second to none, and he poses a significant threat to any opponent in the octagon. His skill in countering punches adds another layer of danger for his opponents, making him a nightmare to contend with. Oh, 
But on the other hand, we have Jamal Hill, a dynamic fighter with exceptional punching ability and lightning fast speed. Hill is coming off a grueling ruptured Achilles tendon injury that forced him to relinquish the title. This raises concern amongst his fans if he will be able to withstand Pahea's deadly leg kicks. Hill's strategy will likely revolve around utilizing his speed and punching power to keep Pahea on his toes and apply pressure early on in the fight. While an upset victory for Hill is within the realm of possibility, Pahea's track record and ability to adapt in the octagon gives him the edge in this fight. Pahea's experience against tough opponents and his ability to stay composed under pressure make him the odds maker's favorite to defend his title. And I do have to side with the odds makers on this one. But one thing is for certain, in a fight between the Hands of Stone and Sweet Dreams, don't expect the fight to go the distance. Someone is going to sleep here.